Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory doubled in on this 2012 Ram 2500 truck. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to get this radio on out. We'll head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for this install, including the radio, dash and wiring harness. We'll get back here and get everything installed. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is get this guy on out. Now, obviously, we have to take a few pieces apart here, um, but essentially, once we remove the dash bezel, we can remove the factory radio. Now, the first thing we need to do to get this radio on out, there should be a little cubby up top with a little rubber padding. Go ahead and remove that, and it'll reveal two T20 Torx screws. Pull those on out. Okay, with that, I just gave it a little tug here. Unsnap all your clips here. Now, we don't necessarily need to take this completely off. We can just lay it down and it does rest. We do have the bench seat here in the center, so it can rest on the seat itself. Once we pull that on out, we need to remove the radio. Now, there's going to be two sets of 7 millimeter uh, screws on both sides of the radio. Um, it's also a good idea at this point to make sure the discs are out of the radio. Once the radio has been removed, it's nearly impossible to get those removed later on. Okay, once the radio comes on out, go ahead and disconnect your harnesses here. Now looking here, this is your AM FM antenna. This is the factory Sirius XM antenna. And then you have your main harness, just like that. Okay, so with the factory radio removed, we're totally done with it. We actually don't need it whatsoever. So we'll set that off to the side. At this point of time, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna need for the install, first and foremost is the radio the customer has chosen to go with. It's this Pioneer AVH 1400 NEX. Features Apple CarPlay. Now to integrate this uh, into the truck, we do need a few adapters and parts here. Now it depends on the harness that you choose to go with. There's a couple of different options for this year of truck. Uh, if we go with the Crux brand, it depends if you have steering wheel volume controls. Uh, however, both of these kits will support either the factory Alpine audio sound system or not. We don't have the Alpine system, but regardless, it still will retain it. Now, the two harness options, this one's missing the box, uh, but the non-steering wheel control version is the Crux SOOCR-26, uh, um, which basically doesn't have steering wheel volume controls integration. It's a little bit cheaper. The one that does have steering wheel integration is the SWRCR-59. And uh, with these kits, we'll link them down in the description here for you. For the dash kit, because this has already been used once, this is the Metro 95-6511. Um, houses a double den radio. Or if you're doing a single den, it's the 99-6511 version. Now finally, we do have an Oxy USB flush mount adapter. It just moves the Oxy USB of our radio to a desired location. And lastly here, we have an antenna adapter, which is the, I believe it's the Metra 40-EU10. And again, we can link all these parts down in the description. So at this point in time, what we need to do is we're gonna grab our harness kit. We don't have steering wheel volume control, so we don't need this kit. So we're gonna grab this kit. Now it comes with two different harness styles. Go into the truck to see which one plugs in. Most cases, newer trucks will have the, the second generation harness plug, which is this guy with the bent corners. This guy is completely square. This doesn't fit in our application. We can set this off to the side. This is the harness that we need. Now this, essentially here, we have many videos on this harness. And if you wanna see how to wire one of these harnesses up, we'll link that down in the description for you. But it has either an amplified or a non-amplified input. And basically, if you have the Alpine system, you'll plug this into the amplified output. If you have the non-Alpine system like we do, you'll plug this into the non-amplified input. Wire configuration here will be different too as well. Again, we're gonna link that wiring configuration in the description because it's not essentially color for color if you have the Alpine system. It's a little bit different with your speaker wire output. Just a big FYI there. 
Okay, so we're gonna grab our harness adapter and the harness adapter that came with the radio. We're gonna strip both ends, prepare that harness. Today, we're gonna be soldering and using heat shrink, but if you can't solder or don't have the means to do so, you can also use crimp caps or butt connectors. Just don't use wire nuts as they're not designed for an automotive application. All right, so what we've done is we've stripped both ends. Now, because we are soldering today, we went ahead and loaded up one of our harnesses here with some heat shrink. So as those soldered connections cool, we can move them up and over those connections and shrink them down with the heat gun. Uh, essentially here, in our case, because we don't have the factory amplified sound system, we can essentially just match color for color. Now the only one that we're not using is the pink here because that's a vehicle speed sense. Our Pioneer radio uh, doesn't have anything that would need the vehicle speed sense wire. No onboard nav, nor does it have wireless CarPlay. So we don't need that. We'll just cap that guy on off, but everything else we will need. Now we're not doing a micro bypass today because it is a Pioneer. We will be hooking up the parking brake as normal. Um, at the parking brake, the foot brake that's located up underneath the dash, uh, we'll just tap into the wire that's off that ground. That uh, makes it nice and easy. So at this point of time, let's start making those connections. All right, so what we've done here is we connected our Pioneer harness to our Crux uh, vehicle harness adapter. Again, everything was color for color for us here today, uh, which was great. We don't need vehicle seat sense, speed sense, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, heat shrink that one off. And uh, yeah, the one that is not connected, our smart harness does not provide a parking brake, so we got to run that to the parking brake wire that's in the driver's side kick panel. So we'll run that with this long cable. Um, as for this, we don't have the amplified system, so the blue-white on our harness isn't connected to anything. There's nothing on the other side. So um, other than that, we'll move our heat shrink up and over those connections, and we're going to shrink them down with the heat gun. All right, as our harness cools here, we're going to wrap it in some Tessa tape, just give a little more protection within the dash. All right, so our harness adapter is all done and good to go. This end plugs into the vehicle. This is our parking brake wire, which will connect down to the kick. This goes to the radio, and this is our little smart harness, so this will just rest back behind the uh, the radio itself. So next thing, let's turn our attention over to the dash kit. So for a dash kit, it's not our favorite dash kit uh, style, but it is what it is uh, and available for this vehicle. So it's little basically a left and a right bracket. You screw either one set of face plates or the other set there's two sets now in this updated version of this dash kit you just got to see which one fits the best um, the thicker ones are generally for those kits that have a deeper bezel this one has a really shallow one they used to have a lot deeper ones so since this one's is super shallow we used the shallower ones it was used on the other radio previously installed and so um, but essentially we spent some time trying to modify to make sure that this sat nice and flush nice and clean um, but that's about it and uh, at this point our dash kit is done what we'll need to do is we're going to go ahead and run our bluetooth mic you can put it on the steering column we like to put it on the a pillar it's up and out of the way um, and so we're going to get that mounted run the cable and uh Lastly, we need to grab our antenna adapter here, and we're gonna go ahead and plug that on in. That's about it. Now we'll jump to the car to show you if you have to do any dash modifications to mount your v uh, radio. Just depends if you're doing a single or a double DIN. Now our dash has already been modified as it had an aftermarket radio in it previously. Um, so we'll show you what the previous installer did in terms of cutting, but only cut what you need to in, in order for your new radio to fit. So let's head back to the car to start getting everything reinstalled. So this is how the previous installer went ahead and cut the dash. You don't need to cut necessarily that much. You only need to cut what you need, but you have to leave these because that's the only location where your radio is going to mount to. So keep that in mind. It looks like they probably use some sort of saw. Uh, generally, we use a multi-tool to help cut that and uh, makes makes light work, especially when it's just all plastic. Here is our USB aux power socket adapter. We got that all installed there. To get this panel on out, there's a screw there. And a screw down below that you can just pop this cover off to locate. That comes on out. We pop the power socket out of the way and then uh, mounted our aux and USB in its place. 
pretty cool adapter. Then we ran those cables up there, which will connect to the back of the radio. All right, so now let's go ahead and make our connections. Let's grab our smart harness here. We'll connect that first, just like so. We can tuck our brain box back in there. And we already connected our antenna adapter. And we have our aux and USB, which we'll show you just in a minute, but we fished it up into the dash. So let's start making those connections. Okay, with all our connections made, we can now just tuck everything back here in the dash. All right, now before we get too deep into this, let's go ahead and test it, make sure it's working. Awesome. Let's go ahead and test our backup camera. Looks good. That's about it for this radio install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Again, we'll link all the parts that we used in this video in the description for your convenience. We actually did a backup camera in this radio install. And so if you wanna see how we installed a backup camera to this aftermarket radio, we'll have a link down in the description. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.